It all started with an earthquake on Friday, March 11, 2011. Lasting roughly 6 minutes, the magnitude 9.0 earthquake struck at 2.46 pm. It was the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in Japan and the fourth most powerful earthquake in the world since modern record keeping began. Unfortunately, that was only the beginning. The earthquake was followed by a 14 meter high tsunami. Upon detecting the earthquake, the active reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station automatically shut down their fission reactions as a safety measure. As there were problems with the electricity grid, the reactor's emergency diesel generators automatically started. They were powering the pumps that circulated coolant throughout the reactor's cores to remove decay heat, which continues to be produced after fission has ceased. The huge tsunami swept over the plant's seawall and flooded the plant's lower grounds, filling the basement with seawater and knocking out the emergency generators. This led to three nuclear meltdowns, three hydrogen explosions and the release of radioactive contamination in Units 1, 2 and 3 between March 12th and 15th. The radiation released into the atmosphere forced the government to declare an evacuation zone around the plant with a 20 km radius. Some 150,000 residents were evacuated from their communities surrounding the plant. It was the most severe nuclear accident since the 1986 Chernobyl disaster and the only other disaster to be classified as a level 7 event on the international nuclear event scale. I visited the Chernobyl exclusion zone back in 2010 and learned about how the sanitation of the area was handled. I wondered how a similar accident would be perceived and handled only five years after it happened. I asked myself, how would I feel if the same thing happened to my family and me and then some foreigner wanders around my house and goes through my personal belongings and history? I decided to hire a guide that would get all the necessary permits from the people whose houses I would be visiting. I had to know that they were okay with me being there. My daydreaming was suddenly interrupted as I glanced the radiation indicators along the highway. They were showing elevated levels. That's when the feeling of dread sunk in and I realized we were very close to the zone. We stopped our car at the checkpoint and the police checked our papers. After a short questioning, they raised the ramp, letting us enter the exclusion zone. As we were traveling the empty roads, I learned about the process of revitalization that was happening. Big sacks of irradiated dirt were piled up everywhere we looked. Uh -huh. Restoration. Restoration, that means restoration. Okay. So we are right in front of the town of Nami. This is well 
where the soil is being deposited. Where will the soil be stored after removal? I asked. The reply, no one knows for sure, sent chills down my spine. This area is famous for its kilns and traditional Oborisoma ware, which dates back 300 years. The kilns relied on clay particular to the region, but after the events of March 11th, all 25 of them were destroyed. Kachi Uma Ware, meaning winning horse, got its name from the horse motifs that appear on Oborisoma ceramics. Unfortunately, these items were too irradiated to ever serve their purpose. We also visited a couple of houses along the way. One that stood out in particular was the Shineha House and Clinic. It belonged to a family of a doctor who treated his patients in his home. I remember as I entered the house, the smell of rot reminded me of how recent this accident was. Walking around town, I realized it was a ghost town. All you could hear were the sound of the wind and occasional banging of hammers from workers repairing houses. At one point I saw an old man who came out of nowhere and he bowed in silence, waiting. Our last stop was the tourist facility Marine Park. The building stood out from the flat meadows that were surrounding it. Later I learned that this had been a very densely populated area. Now only a few houses were left standing after the tsunami.
There was a room with chairs grouped together and facing a window that looked out to the open sea. I imagined people sitting in the chairs, watching in horror as the waves approached from the horizon. This was the end to my visit to Fukushima. I saw a lot of pain, but most of all I saw the hope and resilience of people trying to rebuild their old lives. The most important lesson this experience has taught me is that even in the darkest of times, humanity always finds a way to persevere.